I said it's hard for me to love I really thought that you would be the one Maybe it's hard for me to love Cause you told me you changed but I did not see one Hey what's going on everybody it's Caleb Beasley here We're gonna check out another uh, video today Another wrestling related video This is by What Culture Wrestling Been subscribed to them for uh, several years now um, one of the, actually probably one of the longest subscriptions I have is through uh, what culture so let's check out 10 things WWE wants you to forget about 2023 I have not seen this video I haven't seen a lot of uh, what culture videos lately so it should be really interesting to check some of these out and let's see what does WWE want us to forget about the year 2023 this has been a great year for WWE in general, but especially for its premium live events, the biggest of which have undergone a major upswing in quality. But unfortunately, this improvement wasn't always extended to the B-shows. Sure. Hello there, my very good friends. I'm Andy from What Culture, and here are 10 Andy. WWE wants you to forget about 2023. Number 10, B stands for boring. We shouldn't be entirely surprised that 2023's B-level PLEs haven't hit quite as hard as their bigger brothers they are b-level ple's after all but considering the great job WWE great did match with Backlash, great for match. example in puerto rico it was disappointing to see some of the other smaller brands falling short uh. the payback and fast lane one two punch combo didn't rock anybody the shows acted as confirmation that a certain vince mcmahon tradition is continuing under triple h yeah. that being the fabled summer slump between SummerSlam and survivor series even money in the bank which somehow contrived to promote a merely okay gunfer match was rescued by the white hot last 10 minutes of the bloodline headline yeah and they did a that's the thing there was a period in time where pay-per-views were absolutely being rescued by the bloodline story now wwe has, has put on some excellent uh pay-per-views ple's whatever you want to call them i call them pay-per-views uh, now, before some smirk out there is like, well, you don't pay-per-view, you know, you I don't care, okay? I call them pay-per-views. That's what I call them. You want somebody else that calls them somebody else, go watch somebody else's video. I call them pay-per-views. It's easier. Uh, anyways, this particular, um, I remember watching this and it was an okay show. It was definitely an okay show. My, my thing is with them having the titles held up, you know, for so long with Roman Reigns, you know, the money in the bank and all the who's going to get the next opportunity. You don't really buy into it, you know, that well. But this did save the show for sure. And and saved many shows because this is one of the greatest stories WWE has ever told, this Bloodline story. So if there's room for improvement on WWE shows in 2024, it is definitely amongst the smaller PLC. Cena should have won. To be fair, they're off to a really good start in sending Elimination Chamber down under and announcing Bash in Berlin. Number nine, the launch of the World Heavyweight title. Woo! Triple H had a right to feel smug and defiant after WrestleMania 39, but he laid an egg in announcing the World Heavyweight title back in April. Papa Paul claims that while the undisputed Universal Championship situation was good for Roman Reigns, it wasn't necessarily good for WWE. It was not. The was that nobody was good enough to beat Roman, so these other guys need something to fight something over. To so, do, yeah. from day one, you were to receive this belt as a secondary consideration, which was always going to be the case to a degree, but the verbiage made matters a lot worse. Yeah. And in order to get that big old logo front and center, WWE didn't even score the easy tap in of bringing back a classic design like the big. Gold belt. Yeah, I wish they brought the new that design back. was ugly, like somebody had taken a big embossed dump on an elegant design, which hardly helped matters either. Number eight, the World Heavyweight Title in general. Even yeah. less ideal than the way the WHT was launched was the idea of a prominent title defended regularly in matches that shot for greatness, existing at the same time as Gunther's wonderful reign as Intercontinental Incredible Champion. Reign. You simply cannot try to promote something as a workhorse belt when you've already got a better version sitting over here which is a big part of why Seth Rollins' run has kind of flopped. Now, Rollins yeah. has hardly worked bad matches this year, but none of his World Heavyweight title defenses are going to trouble many match of the year lists. And his resume was absolutely smoked by Gunfer, who is unquestionably the stronger champion on Raw. This... Yeah, and... For me... <sighs> like they said, I, I, haven't, I haven't seen Seth Rollins wrestle a bad match. You know, in, in in this particular ring, I have not seen a bad um, match. 
But let's just take let's just take a look at this real quick. Let's take a look at the image that's on the screen. How do you take this person seriously as a world heavyweight champion? Look at this. You know, if this is how he wants to go out there and, and present himself, hey, cool. Cool, but I personally just don't, I just don't get into it. I mean, I'd rather have this. This looks more like a champion to me back here than the goofy stuff. And it doesn't help that the belt is not really, I see what they were trying to do. Uh, I personally would have brought back just the traditional big gold belt. Um, and if I had the ability to tell Seth Rollins that, hey, if you want to, you know, wear those types of, um, I guess more attention attention catching outfits or whatever that's fine but you need to be a little more serious when you're talking on the microphone you need to be a little more believable a little more credible because the title reign I have seen worse title reigns in WWE but this title reign it's just it's mid to me it's when you think of the workhorse champion I'm thinking of Gunther for sure because there's been times Gunther hasn't even been on a pay-per-view for whatever reason uh, you know, he wasn't on the pay-per-view, but he's consistently uh, defending the title and, and consistently defended the title. His uh, Ludwig Kaiser and Giovanni Vinci, the people, you know, next to him in Imperium, they have not gotten involved in the matches. They've stayed out the way. Gunther has not needed them to win. I'm not saying that Seth Rollins has needed others to win, but it's just a little... It's a lot easier to buy into Gunther's reign. And to me, the intercontinent, if I had to think of the t the level of importance of titles and uh, most important to least important, the top three, of course, Roman Reigns' championship, the WWE Undisputed Universal Heavyweight, Ch whatever it's called, it's, they be changing the name a lot. Number two for me is going to be the Intercontinental Championship, and it should be the World Heavyweight Championship, but no, number two for me is going to be the Intercontinental Championship. This is number three most important. I, I don't really look forward to these matches. I don't regret watching them, but I'm not sitting there clamoring to see Goofy go out there and have a match. I'm just not with Rollins' transformation back into an earnest workhorse type was a regression back to 2019. The reign did absolutely nothing to turn around the perception that the World Heavyweight title was a consolation prize, leaving it WWE is. with a rebuilding job on a belt that is really far too young to need one. Number 7. SummerSlam. A disappointing show with a supremely disappointing main event, SummerSlam 2023 was an event to forget for WWE in a year of largely fantastic stadium offerings. Seth Rollins vs Finn Balor and Cody Rhodes vs Brock Lesnar were good to great, but were rematches from other smaller That's shows, true. lending the show a familiar feel. Elsewhere, Ronda Rousey vs Shayna Baszler was a flop of an MMA rules bout and a poor idea for the setting. Just, Worked I don't know why they do that. Why do they do the whole MMA rule it's just never gonna work like this is not MMA even if you have two people in there that were uh you know mixed martial artists it's just not going to work and this is the squared circle it's not going to work uh this is not the octagon this is the squared circle like every time they try to do something MMA related it, it just does not work version of a style that WWE fans just don't really care about. Don't Gunther care versus about. Drew McIntyre was good and both guys rule, but it probably isn't even cracking Gunther's top five for the year. And the main event was almost a parody of the Roman Reigns format. A whole load of absolutely nothing for 25 whole minutes before the obligatory shenanigans kicked in, it saw Jimmy Uso turn on his brother. It felt for a while like no the yeet. cherished bloodline saga had gone the way of the NWO in 1999. Number six, the lack of a youth movement. It's a long running point at this stage and we are certainly much improved from the days of when bloody Goldberg could rock up and inexplicably become world champion but the lack of a youth movement on mainline WWE television, not NXT, remains a little worrying. Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes are both 38. The former might not even return to a full-time role. Seth Rollins is only 37, but has pretty much done it all. LA Knight is extremely over, but he is also 41. So is Damian Priest, whose Judgment Day stablemate Finn Balor is, is really? a year 
older. Elsewhere, you've got Drew McIntyre at 38, and he might not even be there next year, depending on what happens with his contract. Might already be resolved by the time this video goes out. Sheamus is 45, Bob Lashley is 47, and AJ Styles is 46. Younger names like Dominic Are Mysterio they really? and they don't even look that old. haven't done enough yet to justify the idea that they have what it takes to headline constantly. So while WWE is popping bottles in the present, they really need to hope some of those NXT prospects do catch on on Raw or SmackDown down so they can keep the good times rolling in the future. Number five, the failed push of Austin Theory. Oh. Austin Theory's year did not go well. He defeated John oh. Cena in a lifeless anti-rob of a lifeless match at WrestleMania match. 39, continued an endless program with Bobby Lashley existing as filler, and revealed himself over and over, a bland automaton completely lost without scripting whenever he was told to show personality. None of his TV matches met the standards expected in 2023, particularly from a guy that so many will tell you is the future. Mechanically tight but utterly soulless, he has been a real letdown. There's still time for Theory to turn it around at 26, but if Austin Theory is the future of WWE, the output so far just isn't matching expectations. Number four. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Austin Theory. <sighs> to me, Austin Theory is so bland and boring and there's just there's nothing really for me to sit there and get behind with him. I unfortunately, I have to say it, Vince McMahon did better at booking Austin Theory than what is currently being presented right now cuz now he's just kind of just screwing around in the back with Grayson Waller. You know, so and that's never really a good position that you want to be in. We've seen people be in that position, just kind of screwing around in the back and just making random appearances. And then the next thing you know, they get the future endeavor, you know, and I do I do not wish for uh, him to get the future endeavor. He's He's got a lot of talent, but something has to happen to where he can actually show us that talent and show us that personality. Because when he was taking the selfies and stuff back in the Vince McMahon era, you know, for me personally, it was at least a little something to kind of buy into, a little something to, um, you know, get behind. But now, I mean, he's, he's, I mean, it's not that he looks weak, you know, he looks strong and everything. And, but after I, I saw John Cena cook him on the microphone, yeah, like you, you, there's got to be something more to you. It's, it's bland, you know, um, it's just not something that makes me want to like buy into buy into you or your character. Stevenson kind of sucking. WWE has already invested quite a lot into making Gable Stevenson a thing. The Kurt Angle comparison was not a good idea from day one, but his Great American Bash debut showed what happens when a high-level athlete doesn't translate to pro wrestling. Against Baron Corbin, Stevenson revealed himself a man so utterly tedious and devoid of personality that, were you ever trapped in conversation with him, you'd pinch your thigh through your jacket pockets just to feel anything other than the intense feeling of wanderlust into literally any other room on the planet. Wow. Stevenson, who was drafted to Raw once, lest we forget, looks a poor investment and potentially a bad omen for the type of athlete that WWE is almost exclusively scouting these days. Gable can throw a suplex fine enough, but he was an amateur wrestler. That's like praising a baker for their ability to knead dough. Number three, the women's tag team title scene. These belts have Woo! never developed an aura of prestige. Creative cares nothing for them, and this attitude filters down to the fandom. They simply just exist. Although Chelsea Green is an entertaining act with an excellent grasp of her material, her run is more of a vehicle for her character than anything else. This development is far more interesting than watching a pair of baby faces suddenly become best friends ecstatic to be in each other's company, but the rot set in a long, long time ago. But at least Chelsea and Piper Niven offer a different dynamic than Raquel Rodriguez, who unfortunately has spent most of her time on the main roster making random friends more frequently than 90% of the AEW roster. There's an easy solution to this. WWE should permanently transfer the titles to NXT, which promotes more women's wrestling than any other brand. Parity and representation are good things, but the belts currently are a hollow exercise in optics that drastically undermine the point WWE is pretending to make. Number I don't know if they need to transfer the titles to, to NXT, uh, but my thing is, is that I, I just don't 
the way the women are being presented sometimes is not like it's just there's nothing to buy into and they have come a long way you know let me just say that they have come a long way but like um now you have someone like Rhea Ripley you know that people are behind probably the the most popular woman on the roster um barely has any matches right but you know people are still behind her i'm not that into you know piper niven and uh chelsea green i'm just I'm just not that into it. Now, it's interesting to see Chelsea have the title and, you know, when she had the title and just being able to, um, I guess, make that kind of a part of her character in a way. But I don't know. And then they mentioned it with Raquel Rodriguez, like at the beginning of 2023, I was a huge fan of Raquel Rodriguez. I thought like, okay, she looks legitimate. And um, but now it's like, you, you don't want to have to, as a WWE fan, search for a wrestler. And when, when are we going to see them next? And when are we going to, who are they going to be with? What do they have going on? You know, it's like somebody like, let's say, a Cody Rhodes. Like, I know, okay, I'm going to turn on TV. There's going to be something with Cody Rhodes. Even if he's on vacation or whatever, it's going to be something to continue the story of Cody Rhodes on TV. It's going to be something to continue the story of Rhea Ripley, uh, Dominic Mysterio, The Judgment Day, uh, The Bloodline. There's going to be something to give me, you know, you can't just go weeks at a time without seeing these people. And then all of a sudden they pop back up or all of a sudden they're thrown with a random team. Somebody like Shotzi, like, where, where have you been? You know, especially when you see them and Shotzi's known for botches and mistakes in the ring, you know, uh, so there's got to be more. You can't just throw this person on this TV and expect me to like, oh, buy into them. I, mean, yeah, I don't I don't know. I don't know. I don't work there. Bits. After learning the lesson of his rehiring spree in which multiple wrestlers were brought back in late 2022 to diminishing returns, Triple H has spent 2023 mostly working with what he already had. The effect of this disciplined approach was felt on many episodes of Raw, since it felt like members of the Judgment Day wrestled combinations of Cody Rhodes, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn every single week. Yes, that wasn't every even week. a feeling or hyperbole, it was literally true for months and months on yeah. end. WWE has been coherent, popular, and on top in 2023, but it was never the most exciting promotion. They didn't do much in the way of radical booking, and the in-ring style was still a bit homogenized. Triple H simply doesn't book water cooler television. This, more than any single catastrophic error, could prove the undoing of this era of resurgence. Number one, padding it all out. The story is never finished. While Roman Reigns losing at WrestleMania would have been optimal, Paul Heyman and company plotted the thing out beautifully until SummerSlam. Cody Rhodes proved that his staying power was undeniable throughout the year. Subjectively, he should have won the title at WrestleMania, but when a company as massive as WWE elects its next top babyface, they do need to be sure. Still, the finish was poorly received and echoed the cynicism of an old regime. The same thing happened at SummerSlam. A twang of realization that WWE would rather pad things out than move storylines forward with a bold sense of momentum. WWE isn't doing something that seems destined to date well. Triple H is doing the basics and doing them very well, but if the promotion needs a jolt of electricity next year, is he the man to provide it? Let me know in the comments section below. I've been Andy, and I'll see you later. This has been a great... Well, that was definitely an interesting video there by uh, What Culture. Go ahead and give them a like if you haven't done so already. And feel free to subscribe to them as well. Uh, some, some, Always some great informative content from uh, What Culture. Yeah, and honestly, I have to give WWE credit because in previous years, there were definitely more things to forget. And there were much bigger things to forget, you know. So they, they have come a long way and I'm excited for what they have in store for 2024. Uh, been a fan for a long time and probably will continue to be a fan for a long time. So um, very exciting to see, you know, what happens next. But um, yeah, we're right here at the beginning of 2024. So a um, lot of exciting stuff, uh, excuse me, a lot of exciting stuff is already brewing and already in the works. So it should be interesting to see in Michael Cole's words, who can capitalize? And uh, yeah, that's about it. Well, thank you so much for checking this out with me. If you feel compelled to do so, leave a subscription and a like. Uh, follow me on Instagram at CalebBeasley24, and I will see you next time.